Good morning, all. Welcome to Monday, September 20th. Hey, Barry and Margo. And Norma's with us. Judy Hatch, good morning. Hi, Amy Bowerman. Wasn't the music wonderful last Sunday? Especially that special music with you and Emily. Thank you so much. Hi, Joan Riggs. Hi, Don Jones. Hi, Doug Goddard. Ken Woods is with us. That's great. Good to see you. It is a good Monday. Let's give folks another minute or so before we get going. A little cloudy here in southeast Michigan today. I haven't looked at the weather, so I'm not sure what's going to happen. Hi, Helen. Hi, Scott Johnson, Larry and Carolyn. Yeah. It was good sleeping last night, I know that. So, uh, before we get going, uh, um, tomorrow um, we will have devotions, but I'm not going to be with you. So, um, I've asked Carrie. Uh, to do that and um, the reason for that is I have a doctor's appointment that I have to go to I'm having a little bit of a problem with um, one of my eyes and I don't think it's anything serious I think it's just getting old and um, but I um, it's tough it's been tough to get in to get an eye exam so I finally got one so I'm heading over to do that and uh, so that's what I'll be doing tomorrow and um, we still have a full day you know, they always dilate your eyes. And it's, you're like, whoa. But uh, we'll see what happens with that. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Sandy. All right. We have, we're up to 19 folks for a Monday. Here we go. So um, for our devotions, we have been, um, we have been uh, kind of working through from the Old Testament historical books. We've been working through First and Second Kings. We, w we worked ahead on Thursday, so we kind of, so we can just pick it up where we're supposed to be. Remember, uh, if you ever miss, uh, and you, and you, or you just want to read them yourself, all these daily lectionary readings are available at the Presbyterian Mission um, Agency, which is presbyterianmission.org, and, uh, and Presbyterian is a tough word to spell once you go to seminary, and uh, they make you learn how to spell it, P-R-E-S-B-Y. T E R, right? Presbyterian. So, um, E R I A N. Say that several times fast. Hi, Kathy. How are you? Hi, Judy Martin. Good to see you. And Nancy Horvath is with us. I'm sure Kip's coming on along too. All right. So, um, yeah, so we're all caught up. So we don't have to worry about going back and catching up on that stuff. We're reading about the kings of. Israel and Judah, because this we're at a time that's post Solomon. Um, so there was a United Kingdom with David, uh, where both Judah and Israel were together, and then we had that time with Solomon together for a bit, and then and then it split apart. So remember, there's still part, the two tribes, um, uh, the twelve tribes are still there, um, but it's Judah which is the much smaller one, and we have Israel. Judah is where Jerusalem is. All right. Oh, I see Carrie's with us. Hello. Oh, and it's Matt Carlson's birthday today. Yeah, yeah. So if you see Matt or, you're, uh, or you want to send him a message, just say happy birthday. Thank you for that reminder, Carrie. Matt does such a great job on our tech crew every Sunday. So um, he's probably out doing lawns. That's what he does most of the time. So, okay. All right. So we're going to go on here. We're going to. I don't have I don't have anything to drink today. Um, Rita is out of the office, so I am here all alone, and um, so um, maybe you can avoid coming down this morning <laughs> unless you absolutely have to or call. Um, we have Mark; will be here in a bit, and um, but I have to leave because um, I have another company coming. Uh, to give us a quote for another furnace. Remember, we, we're not going to repeat the saga of Tim's furnace 
this winter time. So uh, we've already had one quote, and we're getting this other one, and then we're going to make a decision and get going on it, get moving on it. So we are at September 20th. This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to start this day in the Lord, and uh, we'll take our deep breath, and then blow it out. And we're going to worry about the things that we have. I've got a back that's balky today, and I'm not going to worry about that right now, because I just want to concentrate on God's Word for us, and I hope you do too. So we're going to open up today, and our psalm will be Psalm 57. Let's listen for the Word of the Lord today, for us today. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge until the destroying storms pass by. I cry to God Most High, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame those who trample on me. God will send forth his steadfast love and faithfulness. I lay down among lions. They greedily devour human prey. Their teeth are spears and arrows, their tongues sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They set a net for my steps. My soul was bowed down. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Awake, my soul. Awake, O harp and lyre. I will wake, awake the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is as high as the heavens. Your faithfulness extends to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. This is a song of praise for, um, and remember, um, you know, if we had a contemporary song out of the 60s, you know, I always think that our relationship with God is, you know, would be that song, um, I beg your pardon, I never promised you a rose garden. Um, so along with the sunshine, there's got to be a little rain sometimes. So we live in this world that is not, it's, uh, the kingdom is overshadowing it. The kingdom is coming, but it's not there, which means that it's, it's uh, you know, we've got these uh, things that, God made, but he's also put physical laws into place that limit us, and it also means that people have choices, too. So it's a tough world. It's a tough world. And um, next Sunday, um, we're going to talk about that a little bit, uh, the stumbling blocks, right, that to our faith. And I think this is reflected here in the psalm. You know, it says that people are setting traps and nets, and what's the purpose of those things? It's to pull people away. Know, uh, you away from your relationship with God. And um, the best defense to that is to stay steadfast, right, in your faith, but also just to recognize that, um, well, you know, the bad stuff that happens to you, God didn't put it in front of you. You know, God didn't put it in front of you to punish you. And um, I always say, you know, if you think that's what's happening bad, can you imagine what the world would be if God wasn't there at all? Uh, how terrible that would be. All right, the world according to Pastor Tim, right there. So now we're up into our historical reading. We're reading about all these different kings. Not too far down. There are only maybe five kings separated from from uh, David and Solomon at this point. And uh, so we have heard, we're in uh, 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 19. Now we have heard, just to set this context, because it was so long ago that we read about this back, in, back on Thursday is that there's a neighboring kingdom um, to Israel uh, and, and to Judah, right? This would be like modern-day Jordan, Syria area. Um, probably more Jordan. Syria was part, part of the kingdom of uh, Israel, but this is the nation of Aram, A-R-A-M. And um, the king, um, they, there was disputed land, right? And if you remember, uh, the king of Israel wanted to take it back, so... He, uh, he uses his close relationship with Judah, but then we've got all of the, the prophets that say, don't go do that. So uh, Naaman is the commander of the king of Aram's army, and he goes, and he is healed, and he starts 
he, and he now believes in the king, uh, in the um, in the God of Israel. Um, but he also says, oh, you know, hey, I serve the king of Aram, and so I might need to genuflect, you know, to to Aram's God. And, I, and is that okay? So he's kind of gotten special dips dispensation for that. So we're picking this up here. Second Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 19. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. This was the battle between Judah, Israel, and the, against Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Uh, didn't we read this? Help me out. Help me out. I'm going to come back over here. I thought that we read this. Maybe I just read ahead of it. Okay. Anyway, so we're, we're going to hear about how Naaman comes to believe in the God of Israel. I thought I read this. Anybody? There's a little bit of a thing between when I say it and when you get it, so I need to wait a little bit here. Last Monday. Last week. Huh. So I was a week out. Was I a week out? guess what? We're all caught up then, right? We're all caught up. Well, I'm going to move, so we're going to hold off on that. We're all caught up in that. I apologize, folks. Sometimes I hit the wrong button, and I must have hit it last Monday. Well, we all make mistakes, right? And it was not intentional. And um, I asked for forgiveness. And I know right, Christ would forgive me. Will you guys forgive me? <laughs> so, all right, we'll go in here. This, um, it's a little tough when we're doing this catch-up thing, you know, because... We're doing multiple days at one time trying to do that. So, All right, so we'll move on. We're going to move on because you know, we're caught up. So tomorrow we'll, we'll read about Naaman again. So just remember the story with Naaman, uh, if you don't remember it, is the fact that um, he suffers from leprosy and he decides to see um, uh, if, um, if he can get healed. And, and uh, the king of Israel... Uh, He's like, what are you doing? What are you doing here? Well, Elisha tells him, um, hey, um, go bathe in the Jordan. And, and Naaman gets, you know, he goes bathe seven times. And, and Naaman gets angry. He says, aren't, aren't the rivers from my country more pure and more cleaner and better than yours? What do you, what, I could, you know, I could have done that here. But he just does it. And he's healed. And so then he comes to believe. And uh, so then that's when he says, hey, I've got a problem because if I believe in your God, I still serve the king of Aram and they have their own God. The God, um, the God that we hear about most often in the countries around Israel um, was Baal, B-A-A-L. And um, so it was a God of fertility. So that's, uh, you'll, you'll hear that about Baal, B-A-A-L. So that was the big, that was the major uh, competing religion at the time. All right, so we're going to move into the New Testament. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 21. This is Paul's letter to this church who um, um, has grown greatly, but um, they're, they're doing some practices that Paul doesn't like too much. And, uh, not treating, not treating everybody equitably uh, and fairly, respecting each other. 
Here we go. Let's listen for God's word for us today. Already you have all you want. Already you have become rich. Quite apart from us, you have become kings. Indeed, I wish that you had become kings, so that we might be kings with you. For I think that God has exhibited us apostles as last of all, as though sentenced to death, because we have become a spectacle to the world, to angels, and to mortals. We are fools for the sake of Christ, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are held in honor, but we in dis disrepute. To the present hour we are hungry and thirsty, we are poorly clothed and beaten and homeless, and we grow weary from the work of our own hands. When reviled, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we speak kindly. We have become like the rubbish of the world, the dregs of all things, to this very day. I'm not writing this to make you ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children. For though you might have 10,000 guardians in Christ, that's how many people they think, you know, might, might, might have been converted here in Corinth, you do not have many fathers. Indeed, in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. I appeal to you, then, be imitators of me. For this reason, I sent you Timothy, who is my beloved and faithful child in the Lord, to remind you of my ways in Christ Jesus, as I teach them everywhere in every church. But some of you, thinking that I am not coming to you, have become arrogant. But I will come to you soon, if the Lord wills, and I will find out not the talk and I will find out not the talk of those these arrogant people, but their power. For the kingdom of God depends not on talk, but on power. What would you prefer? Am I to come to you with a stick or with love and a spirit of gentleness? So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. This might be one of some of Paul's strongest words. He's <laughs> if you didn't get it, he is angry at them, right? He's saying, Hey, look, you're uh, there's some pretty quote powerful people of people of worldly power that have come here and, and um, I think that he's also saying you know they might say hey as you accumulate this wealth and this power you're, you're, you're thinking that you're being blessed by God sound familiar right it's the gospel of prosperity that we, that uh, not so much today but has been preached by others in the past and saying that's not it right a, a true Christian and he uses him and he and he's pretty arrogant himself here he's saying look you know we're persecuted we're lowly we're, we're viewed as rubbish by the world but we're blessed by God and where are you in this where what are you looking and he said hey if I come there I'm gonna fix this thing and um, it's up to you change your ways right because I can come with a stick because I'm coming with the power of God or I can come to you with love and the spirit of gentleness you know turn yourselves around before I get there so uh, all right gospel we'll move on to Matthew um, and this is this is again this is our, our uh, Sermon on the Mount which we can find in Matthew 5 4 5 6 uh, this is kind of like right in the midst of it right here this is Jesus in Matthew this is Jesus big big teaching um, before uh, before he goes on uh, into, into Jerusalem he's really laying out this is this isn't just the game plan this is this is what this is these are the this is the game this is the game all right let's listen for the word of the Lord today you have heard that it was said to those of ancient time you shall not murder and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment but I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister you are liable to judgment and if you insult a brother or sister you will be liable to the council and if you say you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. Uh, so when you are offering your gift to, at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly. When you're accused with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you will be thrown into prison truly I tell you you will never get out 
until you have paid the last penny. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. So this is our Christian life together. Um, again, he doesn't say that the, the courts and the judges continue to exist. But he's saying, uh, look, if you, if in your business with each other, right, um, make sure that you're treating each other fairly. And, and, and he holds out murder as like the, the worst offense. And, and it's terrible, right? But he's saying, look, judgment comes with uh, what you might consider to be lesser offenses. And this is when I, you know, you'll hear me often when I'm preaching that, you know, I, I think that one of the strongest teachings of Jesus is what, uh, what it's about is our relationship with one another and honoring each other in those relationships, not holding ourselves as better than the other. Um, and so it says here, you know, um, you've got to you've got to get your relationships right. And if you come to worship, if you come to worship and you've got, um, you know, that that uh, poor relationship, hold off, you know, uh, before you come before God, so you can get the full power, the full might, the might and the grace and everything. Go and try to fix that relationship and then come. Now, I, I knew a guy, um, uh, this was right, I was still in seminary. I was still in seminary. And um, there was a church, a non-Presbyterian church, that was looking for an associate pastor um, up by where we have our cottage. And so there was a few people that I knew in that church, and they thought that, um, they thought that, uh, I might make a good associate pastor for him. And I have to say it was a little bit alluring because of the location. Um, but uh, so I, I talked to him, and uh, I remembered um, they found out that it would have been really difficult for me. Uh, well, they wanted me, but I'd have to, in order to serve them, I would have had to go back to seminary for yet another year, their seminary in Chicago. Um, and I'm like, at a distance. Him, but I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. And uh, but uh, so they, I was talking to one of them, and uh, they were asking me about my beliefs about uh, the Lord's Supper. And I said, you know, it's God's table. I believe it's open to all. And they said, well, do you do you need to purify yourself before you come to the table? And I said, well, and I used this. I said, you know, in Matthew it says that we need to we need to get our relationships right before we come and give our gift. So. I think that you do need to uh, to think about that, but it's everybody's individual choice. This happened. To, this happened to be a denomination that um, um, they practice judgment on a lot of people, and they withheld they withheld communion from people that they didn't think were worthy. So, and uh, when they told me that, I was like, that was it. I'm like, nope. See you later. Um, you can be in the nicest place in the world, and I don't I don't think I want to be part of that. So. All right, we'll come over here. All right, oh, you see that there's another person there. We gotta get rid of that right now. People keep trying. All right. Well, it seems to look like you forgive me. Very good. You know, folks, we'll deal with it, right? We'll deal with it. So, <laughs> where were you last week? And tell me, hey, you're not on the right day. <laughs> so. All right. Well, folks, uh, it's been this kind of day. It's, it's, boy, this is what, what a way to start the week, right? But it's going to be good. It's going to be good. We'll get it all right. So let's, uh, let's pray. Lord, uh, sometimes your word for us, we don't catch it on the first time through. So you, put ways, you have ways of putting it in front of us again. So maybe there was something in these uh, scriptures that we needed to hear again and again. But Lord, we thank you for this day, this opportunity that we've had together. It doesn't prevent us from saying hello and supporting one another. And Lord, um, as we continue to go through these, this day, we just ask you to accompany us. We know that there's people who are ill and in need of healing. We also know that there are people who, um, who, are, who don't know you. 
And we would ask that, uh, that the light of Christ might come to shine on their lives. And Lord, uh, as we pray, we, we pray for the continuing uh, diminishment of this pandemic. And we're hearing of more and more cases of people getting breakthrough infections after they've been vaccinated. Some getting very, very sick. So, Lord, um, boy, it's been so long. And we thought that we were getting so much better. So, Lord, um, continue to protect us and guide us. We ask all of this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. God bless all. Thank you. Remember, I love you. Um, and uh, God loves you. We, still, we, we all love you here at Allen Park Presbyterian Church. And if there's anything that we can do, let us know. All right. God bless and have a good day in the Lord. Bye-bye.